Sorry for the delay, guys. Uh, so we're going to present this session, sharing pre-planned routes with Navigator. Just want to make sure everybody's in the right session. My name is Nick Patel. I'm one of the product managers at Esri, covering Esri's world geocoding and network capabilities, including the Navigator app. I'm joined by my uh, colleagues, Joel Whitney, part of the dev team, and uh, Frank Kish. Next, next slide. So just a, a quick agenda, a simple agenda. So before we show the demos, we want to provide you with the context into what our Navigator app is, some of the benefits of the Navigator app, and then switch gears and talk about planning routes in the back office and pushing that out into the field and allowing your field workforce to navigate using the, the solved routes in the back office. And then we'll wrap up the session with the Q&A. So that's, that's what we've planned. So what is Navigator? It's basically what you think it is. It helps field workers get from one place to the next as efficiently as possible, even with multi-stops, restructuring, recalculating those routes to calculate the most efficient route, um, saving cost and time. It's fully integrated with other field apps that Esri delivers, including the Explorer app and even the Collector app where your field workers are collecting data. It works offline, so the data is packaged and ready to use in the Navigator app locally. You could route with different travel modes, whether you're routing in the car or uh, in truck and you have a uh, height and uh, weight restrictions, or you're walking with the pedestrian content. Supports all of these things. Some of the high-level benefits, uh, we've mentioned that it works offline. Um, we also include ready-to-use global maps that are partitioned by geography, whether you're interested in regional packages like North America or Europe, or even down to the state level packages. And even when you're doing cross-border uh, navigation, like for instance, routing from California into Nevada, we support that use case as well. In addition to that, most of our organizations are interested in building uh, and navigating using their own asset and network data, so the Navigator supports this pattern as well. And we'll talk about that a, a little later. The last thing I wanted to mention is that it works with the other field apps as well as calculating uh, the routes in the back office and pushing them to the, uh, to the field using the stop list. And we'll discuss the workflow in greater detail. Here are some of the types of organizations and verticals that would be interested in the Navigator. So a lot of customers in the NAT resources leveraging Navigator to do their field work. Utilities, uh, local government, commercial and transportation organizations are also leveraging the Navigator app. We had great success with some of the, the, the counties that are mentioned here, where they saved significant, significant amount of money and time in leveraging Navigator uh, for their field inspections, as well as uh, their delivery workflows. Uh, uh, the link to these uh, case studies will be provided at the end of the, the presentation. As I said early on, Navigator includes ready-to-use uh, packages that you could quickly deploy uh, in the field. So we, we deliver the ready-to-use uh, packages through ArcGIS Online. You have access to a group that includes all of the different uh, variations of these packages broken down by a geography of interest. And uh, the next slide discusses that in, in greater detail. So here's the coverage map that shows the different segmentations of packages that we have available using some of the best uh, street reference data that's available in the market, commercial street data, as well as uh, the ability to uh, build your own custom network data sets into the commercial street segments. It's available by country, region, state, or even province. Sorry, go ahead. In addition to that, we also support the workflow of uh, using your own network, locator, and map data and uh, within the ArcGIS Pro application and desktop, being able to repackage that into a mobile map package and then quickly and easily use that in the Navigator app. And now switching gears, uh, Joel's gonna uh, go through the detailed uh, workflow and leveraging the, the, the stop lists and, and how to bring that into Navigator. Okay, can you hear me okay? Okay, so uh, once you have your maps, your mobile map packages, uh, whether those be uh, street map premium, 
uh, mobile map packages that have already been created for you, or whether they be custom mobile map packages, something that might have your own custom network built into it. Um, another thing you might want to do is create pre-planned routes that you can share with your field workers. Um, and this will uh, lighten the burden on the field workers so they don't have to manually open these maps and search and add each stop one at a time. Um, so there's a few different ways that you can do this. Um, we've seen everything from individuals using their own custom scripts to generate routes and then deploy these out to their field workers. Um, you can also create a, a route layer on, on ArcGIS Online right now, and then we'll show you how you can share those with your field workers. Um, and then we'll also show you how you can do this in Pro as well, um, using a custom uh, plugin to generate these URL schemes and then pass those, uh, share those off to your workers. So when we talk about uh, sharing pre-planned routes with Okay, so let's try that again. So when we talk about sharing pre-planned routes to your field workers, uh, what we're really talking about in the current version of Navigator will be sharing deep links that utilize the URL scheme. If you want to learn uh, more details about the ins and outs of the URL scheme and how, those, how it applies to all of the applications as a whole, I'll be doing a separate demo theater on Thursday called Remotely Invoking ArcGIS Apps. Uh, but for the sake of this presentation, uh, we'll just say that a URL scheme and a deep link is essentially just like a URL that, like, that you would see to a website, except for it will launch a native mobile application on your device. So if we want to break that down further and look at what the URL scheme structure actually is, it really is two parts. You first have the app scheme, and this will be the identifying information that tells the operating system which application will be opened. Um, so instead of having like a URL to a website that has the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, here you'll have the actual um, app schema that has been defined within that mobile application. In addition, you'll want to add uh, maybe some app-specific data or parameters. And what this will do is, once the application is launched, it will give the application the information it needs to give the field worker their desired state. So in the context of Navigator, here's one of the simplest URL schemes you can have. Uh, you have the application scheme of ArcGIS-Navigator, and then you have one stop. If you want, you can add as many stops as you want, and essentially what will happen is when this gets opened in Navigator, it will calculate a route from your current location uh, to each one of these stops in the order they appear in the uh, URL scheme there. I've also added the stop name parameter in this case, just so it gives a little bit of context to the field worker. So instead of navigating to these uh, coordinates that don't really mean anything, you can give them a meaningful name. There's also a bunch of other different parameters that you can use when you formulate your own custom URL scheme. Um, I showed you the stop and the stop name, but if you'd like, you can also include an optional start parameter. And what this will do is when Navigator launches, it will use that start location, whether it be a coordinate pair like we saw before, or maybe something specified uh, that the locator will return you. Um, and then when Navigator generates this route, it will use that start location uh, instead of your current location. You can also provide a callback in a callback prompt. Um, if any of you have used Explorer or Collector or Workforce, you'll notice that you can get directions to uh, something, an assignment or a feature within that map. And then that takes you to Navigator. And once that uh, navigation route is complete, it will prompt you to go back to whatever the originating application was. And this is essentially what the callback scheme does. Um, and it's an, this is important to note, so if some of you are using your own custom application for anything, you could easily integrate Navigator into your custom application, and then it would give um, the field worker an easy way to get back to whatever your custom application might be. You can also provide the optimized parameter. So in the example I showed before, um, I didn't include the optimized parameter, so when Navigator opens that route, it will just load it in the, the, stop, the order the stops appear in that list. But if you want, you can provide that optimized parameter, and then it will solve based on the travel mode that is currently set for that map. If you want to use maybe some specific travel mode, 
So as Nick was saying, you can have your own um, restrictions and a specific travel mode in your network data set. You could specify that here and then Navigator would honor that. If you wanna learn some more details about this, uh, we have a GitHub repository that has uh, some detailed documentation so you can go on there and check that out. I believe we have this URL at the last slide as well. Okay, so once you actually um, have created the URL, your custom deep link URL scheme, however the way you want, um, there's a few different ways that you can share this out with your field workers. Uh, since the URL is just like any other URL like you might have to a website, uh, you can share this in a hyperlink and you can send that to someone uh, via email. Um, you could embed it in a custom attribute display uh, for a, a pop-up in your web map or mobile map package. Um, or you could even have it hosted on a website somewhere. You can send it uh, the URL in its raw form. So like what we've, we've been seeing already, you can just send that directly to someone. Uh, and depending on the operating system, you can send that uh, right in mail client. You can send it as a text message. Um, and then as long as you have the navigator installed, it will display as like a tappable link that you could open up. You could also integrate it into your own custom application like I mentioned earlier, uh, just using that URL scheme uh, behind like a button or something in your own custom app. Another cool way that uh, some of our users have been using it, which if we have time I'll show you at the end here, is you can actually embed that URL in a QR code and then you can use a third party application to scan the QR code to launch Navigator, or using iOS 11, you can just use the camera app to like, basically point the camera at the QR code and it'll launch Navigator. Okay, so with that said, um, we're going to jump into some demos. So Frank will take over for a little bit and he'll show you a couple demos. One, how you can create a red layer on ArcGIS Online and share that out to your field workers. And then another demo where he has a custom pro pipe uh, plugin to generate URL schemes and then share that to field workers. And then I'll show you how those get consumed in Navigator afterwards. Hi there. Okay, so um, I'm gonna show two things. I'm gonna show using ArcGIS Online uh, to create some uh, route layers that I can share uh, through a email. And then I'm gonna show a uh, Pro add-in where I create a app, uh, a deep link that uh, Joel had talked about, and just send it to him so he can just uh, use it in Navigator. So I'm starting here with just this um, empty map around Palm Springs, and I can bring up this directions widget. And once I'm here, I can say, well, let's say one of the places I want to go is um, Palm Springs International Airport. So I'm going to drop a point there. Um, there's another place nearby called the Living Desert that we go to once in a while. Um, it's just a little zoo, so we're gonna go by there. Um, I'm gonna add another uh, stop, and I'm gonna say I need to go to Starbucks after that. Um, click a location, uh, grab the one that first came up, and then I'm just gonna drop another point um, randomly over here. I wanna go over here, don't have an address, but I can add an actual point itself. So we see that it's created um, a route between these. And to save this, um, I just wanna go out here and click this save button. And then I'm just gonna give it a name like um, sharing demo right now. And then I'm just gonna save. Once it's done saving, we'll go out and look to see what's there. All right, so just refresh this. And what we see is that we have this, uh, this new sharing demo uh, item. Uh, it says it's a route layer, and then if we actually look at this a little bit more in detail, I'll let that come up. Um, we see it's, it's the route that we created, it's got some more information, some time, some mileage. First thing I'm going to do is share this. I'm going to share this with a group that uh, Joel is part of. And then I'm going to take this actual link and... Whoops. Joel. Online. 
stops. And I'm going to send him this, this link to portal, this portal item. And what he's going to eventually see in a mobile friendly way um, is this navigator stop list. If I actually look um, what's in here, if I open it up in an empty text document, we see it's this uh, deep link schema was created um, from the stops that I put in uh, in the in the uh, app, uh, the map before. So another thing that you might want to do. So that's one way of creating it. Um, I also have this other map that already has some orders in it. So if I uh, or some stops in it. So if I open this up in a map viewer, let's take a sec for it to come up. <clears throat> so these are some stops around Palm Springs I need to visit. One of the things I can do also is just click on the dot, dot, dot and say route to all features. And it's basically going to use the similar uh, logic of the direction widget. It's going to populate the, the stops. Um, and now I can say get directions. Um, and it's gone out and created a, a list uh, or a route. And if I wanted to, I could save this again and uh, share it with Joel uh, in the similar way. Uh, another way of creating um, route layers is using an analysis tool. I'm not going to actually demo this one, uh, but it's the planned route. And what it does is that you can use the stops that are on the map, such as uh, it's um, shown here. Um, but what, what's interesting here is you can actually break it up amongst multiple vehicles um, and setting multiple stops. The key point is just say include route layers and when you run the analysis and once it's done running, um, it will create a, a single route layer for each of the, the routes that were created from this. So three different ways using ArcGIS Online to create um, some uh, route layers that you can share with someone in the field. Now switching over to Pro, um, similar, I have some stops here that I've uh, created in Pro. Um, and I've got this layer and we're looking at this table uh, from these stops. It's got a couple fields on it. It's got the name and sequence field. And then we've created this little add-in that's going to help generate that custom U or that uh, deep link that Joel had mentioned. So right now I'm just going to use the defaults and say generate. And what it does is it um, in this case, it creates this URL scheme uh, uh, using the table order. So basically just going from top to bottom. Um, you know, we have stop four at the beginning as it has here and stop three as the last stop. So I could send that off. Some options that we've created here are also to use the sequence field. And if I regenerate it, what happens is uh, it goes through and uses the, the values in this field and reorders the stop. So we can see stop one is the first one, and then stop two, and then finally, you know, down to stop five. Again, um, <clears throat> then there's finally this optimize. And if I, uh, Joel had mentioned that. So what I do here is I, I'm just prepending this uh, optimize equals true value to the, uh, you, to the deep link. And what that allows, uh, a user in the field to do is it allows Navigator to actually uh, take the stops and not worry about the order that they were given, but to re-optimize them based upon their present location and the location of all the other stops. So I'm going to send this one to Joel uh, so that he can use that and send it off to him. And at this point, he should have got two emails. Yep. All right, I'm going to pass it back to Joel and you were three. Is that it? Yep. Yep. Okay. Can you guys see that? Okay. Okay. So that's the uh, the email that that Frank showed me, sent me, and um, you see what I'm looking at here is I got his email, and it's I just have that um, URL to the item on ArcGIS Online, and I can go ahead and open that. Um, and what you might notice here is the same item details page as you would see as you were shown in the browser, but instead here, uh, since I'm looking at this item on a mobile device, I have a added button there for open in Navigator. I could just simply tap on that and it would launch Navigator, but if you actually want to see what that looks like, I can long press on that button and it'll give you this uh, pop over here where you can see the actual URL that was formulated when you generated that route. 
So it's pretty similar to what I showed you earlier. You have that ArcGIS Navigator uh, scheme, but then you also have just a list of stops in there, um, as well as the stop names. So I can go ahead and I can open that, and I'll launch Navigator and automatically uh, import that route into there. So that saved me a ton of work of having to uh, actually type those all out. And I can go ahead and look at my multiple destinations and I can see the stop names for everything that he just created the route with. Okay, so if I switch over, this is the second email Frank sent me. And this is using his, uh, his pro plugin he had there. Oh, sorry, it's a little bit delayed, huh? Uh, this is using that pro plug in there and you can see that uh, URL he sent me and he sent it in just its raw form. So you can notice on iOS when you open this up in the mail client, it will actually, it can actually tell that I have Navigator installed and it will present it in a, in a hyperlink type form so I can actually take action on it. Um, you notice he has that optimize equals true parameter in there. So when I go ahead and open that, it will actually generate that route and then find the best, uh, best way to get there using my current travel mode. Um, so there's a lot of times where when you're generating these routes for your field workers, you might not necessarily uh, care the order in which they're going to these things. Uh, in some cases it does matter, but in the cases that you, you don't really care, you can just give it a list of stops and then pass it that optimize equals true parameter and then let Navigator do the work for you. Okay, so one last final thing I'd like to show you guys. Um, so right here I have just this PDF example uh, that has a bunch of QR codes on it. It looks kind of funny, but each one of these QR codes does a specific task. And in this case, it's just an example workflow uh, where a manager is giving a field worker a sheet of paper that has uh, some weekly routes on it. So each one of those QR codes at the bottom has a specific navigator route uh, that will be launched once I, once I scan it. So what I can actually do is just using a uh, QR code scanning application I have, I can actually go ahead, scan that URL, and you can say, see it's the, pretty much the same format URL we've been seeing this whole time. Um, I can go ahead and tap on that URL then Navigator will solve the route for me. So it's a really easy workflow and a lot of organizations who are using this type of thing, they claim that their field workers love it because they don't have to try and get used to typing in, searching for things in Navigator. They can just scan a QR code and then off they go, they can uh, do the work they have to do. So just a quick summary, uh, things we showed you. Uh, we went over some high level UR URL scheme stuff. Um, Frank jumped in and showed you a few different ways that you could uh, create some routes um, using ArcGIS Online. Um, they also showed his pro plugin he had for generating routes. Um, and then I just showed you quickly how you could consume those in Navigator. So just some final uh, resource slides here. Um, I don't know if you want to talk to this at all, Nick, but. Okay, I think it's so, uh, yeah, uh, so the first link is a, a link to the trial for a navigator. The second link is uh, the case studies that we presented. Third is a documentation or online doc for the navigator app. Map coverage that we showed where the packet, ready to use packages are available. We have a community page on GeoNet that you might want to uh, take part and participate in. Also, if you have some requirements that you want to share or some feedback for us. And then the GitHub re repository that, that uh, Joel showed, if you want to access that, the, the link to that is there. I think that's, that's pretty much it. Are there any questions that you guys have? Okay. So the question was, does it consume credit, service credits, if you calculate the route in ArcGIS Online? So yes, so if you're using ArcGIS Online, the network capabilities of ArcGIS Online and solving the route, yes. And then you push the route into the field. That 
the, the aspect where it consumes credits is when you're actually solving the route in ArcGIS Online, but not when you solve it in the navigator, if that makes sense. So the question is, does the, does the network calculation consider traffic information? So, so yeah, so hold on. So I think, I think I know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Frank, but the Navigator app itself isn't um, using the, the traffic information and solving the routes, but if you leverage ArcGIS Online and uh, calculate the route there, it does leverage the traffic data, whether historic traffic patterns or the, the live traffic. Is that, is that correct? Or? All right. <laughs> Do you want to answer it or phrase it? Um, well, I guess it depends which service you're hitting and whether or not traffic is set up. So if, but if you're using online route services that we provide, yeah, there is traffic. Um, but the Navigator application itself will not use live traffic, but will use historic traffic um, based upon the, the packages that are on there. Okay. Thanks, Frank. Any other questions? So, so calculating uh, different, using different solvers of uh, network analyst and bringing them into the navigator. Well, it, well, in th in this case, if you were using something like that pro add-in, um, you could. That's just using the stops that are in there and passing them um, over using that URL scheme to the Navigator app. So yes, uh, in a way, like if you wanted to use, um, create a stop, uh, create a route layer in Pro um, or in ArcMap and you wrote an add-in for that, um, you could uh, create a similar uh, uh, add-in that would read the route layer itself, or the stops layer and create the, the URL scheme. To tell you the truth, that's what I originally based it on using a stops layer and then I thought, well, let's make it a little bit more generic and just use a pure up just point layer. Is that something of interest using the, the live traffic data and solving the routes on Navigator? Okay. Brent? <laughs> oh. Oh. All right. <laughs> Any other questions? So the question was, uh, can you pass the attributes that are in uh, network analyst over uh, also? No, right now, uh, we're looking at stuff to deal with that. But let me ask you, when you say the attributes, which what are you talking about in particular? Okay. Okay. I see. So the attributes on the, the stops themselves. No, but we're looking at that. That's one of the things that are kind of on our roadmap. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, everybody, for attending.